just one month to go for your exams now and this is the time to really be tactical to really be aware of what you can do what you can't do and make sure that the activities you're doing the revision you're doing targets those things that are going to improve your grade the most one month before your exams that's not the time to be writing a revision timetable it's not the time to be starting from scratch and thinking right page one in my revision guide i'll start there and finish there it's time to be selective about which areas of the course you need to focus on most so let me show you what i mean well this is a month of time this is like four weeks this is a month of time and okay well yeah i can see start of the month i've only got one month to go until the exams so okay on wednesdays i'm going to do physics on thursdays i'll do chemistry and that's going to take you quite a long time to kind of populate out that with the subjects you're going to do and when but then you get to those days and maybe some oh no i have football practice on wednesday so i can't really do that physics then so i miss that so i do physics and chemistry on the thursday and then you don't do that and you think mm. and all of a sudden this planner that you spent quite a lot of time actually making is just kind of goes out the window and you haven't actually stuck to that revision timetable that you planned so far more useful would be to do something like this this is also a month of time but instead of days of the week and instead of uh, the days through the four weeks of the month i've just got a grid with the subjects that i need to revise at the top maths english physics chemistry biology in the correct order physics first um re art geography and spanish whatever you need to do and okay i know that in physics well the topic that i struggle with is p5 magnetism okay so that's my main thing there but also i know that not only in physics is it magnetism i the forces part i kind of struggle with but it's not all the forces i can do speed distance and time i can do f equals ma i can do newton's laws so the bit i don't like is the momentum question so i'll write in momentum questions okay now it might be that yours is a bit more detailed than that okay um and obviously you're gonna to need to do every single topic like well, okay chemistry i still can't do titration calculations i get ringing any bells with these topics i'm picking out <laughs> okay or is it in um, maths okay well it's quadratic equations and all of a sudden then rather than a kind of list of subjects on days you've just got a list of the bits that you find the hardest and you have highlighted them as bits that you do so then it's just a matter of getting into the habit of putting that time in so actually habitually every single evening you sit down for two hours and you do one of these things that you've made on your list and once you've done them you can tick them off rather than thinking oh i've got my two hours of physics to do what do i need to do what do i need to get ready to do what do i need to and then before you know it you're actually looking around for the resource rather than looking at that specific topic. So don't plan your time now, plan what you're gonna do in that time. Where are you gonna find what you're going to do? Well, a lot of exam boards, they publish like checklists. Maybe you get checklists from your teachers at school and they're really useful for working through and thinking, well, I need to work on this bit because I'm not sure about that point there. Or in fact, just use your contents pages of your revision guide. So that is essentially a checklist of everything which is in your GCC or your A-level. It's actually having a little look through here doing a little smiley face next to the ones you find easier and doing a little sad face next to the one you need to work on. That becomes very quickly a, a revision list of things that you personally need to work on. But when you use the resources, you've got to keep it hard. You've got to keep it a high level. Don't just be reading through and thinking that is going to make the difference between a grade six and a grade seven or a grade D and a grade C at A level. In fact, the most important pages in your revision guides are the questions pages there are loads of questions out there available even though these are new specifications you can still find lots of past paper questions that are really relevant to you i suggest maybe don't do all of the past papers from the old syllabuses but just maybe do the last few maybe do the hardest one so if it's a 20 question paper do the last five that is going to teach you to answer the hardest questions in physics the highest levels of challenge I'm going to make sure you get your best grade in this summer importantly for a level if you're answering those hardest ones then you're going to be answering the synoptic type of question which is drawing on different areas of the syllabus putting them together to answer a really tough really challenging question if you've got this you've got a list of everything that you need to work on it's too much to think about the whole of every single one of your gcse's in that just one month of time that's going to completely put you off and you're not going to go you're not going to know where to start so before you do start 
make sure that you know which little areas of each topic. You should have a pretty good idea of them by now, which parts you struggle with, what types of question you struggle with, what areas of the course you struggle with, and then you're only working strategically on the areas that matter most to you and your grades. So once you've found out the things that you need to work on, then fly through them as quickly as possible, work on them as quickly as possible, and then reevaluate. well, what's the next bit you need to work on? Have you managed to improve that skill? Can you now do that type of question that you couldn't do before? If you've only got one month to revise in, you need to be really strategic. You need to identify which bits that you need to work on. You need to do that in as little time as possible, and then you need to reevaluate what else you need to work on and start back from scratch. One month before the exam is not the time to be making sets of flashcards. It's time to be using what already exists. If you've made flashcards, well, now's the time to put them into action. If you haven't, then find flashcards that are already made for you. Find websites, find things that have already got revision resources ready to go. Ask your teachers to share with you the things that you, they think you should be doing in this period of time. Don't just be getting that revision guide out starting from page one and trying to work your way through. If you try and work through the whole thing now, you will leave stones unturned. You will skip through quite quickly areas that are really quite important to you. Just focus on areas that you know are gonna make the most impact on your grades. Unfortunately, most revision resources are far too easy. So you need to find things that are at an appropriate level. Placemats that they give out in lessons at school, flashcards, revision guides, they're not a high enough level to give you the opportunity to get the highest grade. This has been Gorilla Physics, I'm Kit Best Masters, and we're all about you understanding more, so you get more confident, you enjoy physics more, and then you're gonna do better in your exams. I hope you'll stick around, I hope you'll subscribe, because there's plenty more revision coming out this month, plenty more revision coming out on the way into exams, plenty more if you're in year nine, year 10, year 12, in next year to help you out with those physics exams.